casket here. Take a look at my washer. This is a Kenmore Elite. It's an 80 series washing machine. It's 12 years old. A year ago I replaced the clutch on it. It was slipping. Um, and then just recently it's been dripping. So I ended up taking the cabinet off, which is right here. I cycled in a full load of water and I'll show you where it was leaking from. So right here you can see is the drum that the clutch is enclosed in. And underneath are these little weeping holes, or weep holes I should say. And so when I took the cabinet off and I put a load of, well, I didn't put clothes in it, but I filled it up with water and I ran it through a cycle, uh, it started dripping out of these holes at the bottom of the clutch drum, which tells me, explains why it's been slipping is because there's water leaking into the clutch drum and lubricating the clutch so it wasn't gripping the drum during the spin cycle. I thought first thing come to my mind it must have been the the main tub seal. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Turns out that's not what it was. So be careful if you go through this process of tearing the thing down and uh, you got a leak it looks like it's coming from the center of the washer the center of the machine you tear it down and you get in there and you say oh it must be the, the main drum the uh, main tub seal and you change it out you put it all together guess what it's still gonna leak turns out it's the inner and outer shaft seal first thing you need a 7 16 socket remove that center bolt that'll pull the agitator out like that and you got this clip this little plastic piece right here this is a spanner nut I didn't have a spanner wrench, okay? So I used a large set of channel locks. Got it on like that, and I hit the handle on this side with a hammer a few times, and it finally broke the spanner nut loose. So if you don't have a spanner wrench, you can do it without it. Okay, so that's it. The trick was this drum. This drum has been on here for 12 years and there was so much corrosion around this this drum block right here that it, it wouldn't come up. So <clears throat> I simply used a three jaw puller. I put the spanner nut back on. I put a three jaw uh, puller with the center here and the jaws of the of the puller around here, put some pressure on it, tapped on it, I put a lot of penetrating oil around it, and finally the whole thing broke free. The block and all. We gotta take the uh, you gotta take the lid off first. The cap. Okay, so there's the drum removal. If you use the jaw, the three jaw puller, you're gonna actually get this piece off as well. It's going to come with it all in one. And then you can simply get a rubber mallet and tap this through. You'll need a quarter inch socket. And there are three of these, these plates here. There's three of these plates, quarter inch bolt, one here, two on the other side. You have to release the spring first, then take these off. Take your bleach dispenser unit off take the hose for the the fill level off here it is right here hanging it went through this hole right here connected to there remove your hose here's the tub seal it's originally what I thought with the with the problem was turns out it wasn't So this will come right off the shaft like that. What's leaking is the main shaft seals. And there's two of them. There's one here, which is all worn out. And there's another one up here. And so we're going to turn this over. 
I'm going to pull the, the motor, the pump the motor, the transmission off, which is held on by three bolts. And that's going to pull right out of this casing right here. Okay, well, it's been two days and the parts are here. So let's talk parts. Let's start with this one that I'm not going to use. I ordered it, but I won't use it. This is the shaft seal. This is the, sh this is the seal that uh, goes around the shaft and where it actually comes out of the transmission. Uh, in order to replace it, that means I'd have to open the transmission. And I don't want to get into that because it's not malfunctioning, so I'm going to leave it alone. But for reference, it's part WP356427. That one's going back. The first seal is the tub gasket. And uh, this, although this wasn't leaking in mine, I'm going to replace it while I'm into it. And this is part 108... 14296. It's a $5 part. As long as you got it this far disassembled, you may as well spend the extra five bucks and put it in. These are the two parts that got me into this project. Either one, if not both, were leaking. This is the lower shaft seal and this is the upper shaft seal. One of the reasons I'm doing this video is because I've noticed there's not a whole lot of DIY videos on replacing the shaft seals. There's tons of videos on replacing your clutch and other various parts, but no leaking shaft seals. So that's my motivation for doing this. Uh, which also I'd like to say, uh, if you're into this project, you already know the basics on how to remove the cabinet and how to tear down the machine. So I'm not gonna get into replacing the clutch procedures and removing the water pump and the transmission and all that. I'll touch on it, but the focus is these two shaft seals. This is the lower shaft seal, the larger of the two, and that's part number 91938. This is the upper shaft seal, part 91939. And then the clutch. This is part number WP8299642. So with the machine laying on its right side, what you're going to do you're going to remove the ground wire and you're going to remove the wiring harness. Pull the wires out of the wire holder and put those up out of the way. Next step will be to release the water pump. Like that. Don't lose your clips. And then a half inch socket. You're going to remove the three bolts holding the transmission. One, two, three. Next step, just grab it and pull the shaft. Right out of the assembly, just like that. Take a look at the clutch that I replaced only a year ago, and you'll see, here's the new one. You'll see all that gunk, there's like a film, like a, like a greasy film in there from soapy water leaking in there uh, through those seals down into the shaft, into the drum. And like I said, this is only a year old, and actually, you can see it's fairly easy to turn that inner clutch in the drum where it should be very very difficult like this new one here let's remove the old clutch remove that ring put that plastic retaining ring that came with the new part in there like that Until it fits in place just like that. You're going to put this clip, wire clip back in, put it in the hole and bring it around like that. And you're going to work it back into that groove like that. It'll click into place. All right, so let's remove the shaft. And I'm just going to gently hit the top of the shaft. As you hit the shaft, 
you're going to see there's another braking system here. There's some brake shoes in a drum. This is actually the mechanism that causes your drum to come to a squealing halt when you open the lid. So uh, you should be alright. You can just ease that right on out. And I'm going to remove the whole thing because I want to inspect the end of the shaft. There is the upper seal we're going to replace and the lower seal is right here. So let's take those out. So I'm going to remove this upper shaft seal. I'd recommend taking this ring off, taking this plastic piece off because you don't want to break that. Stand this up on end. Get a screwdriver down along the end, along the edge of that, uh, between the shaft and that old seal, and hammer it like that, and you'll see it curl over. You'll see it curl over, and then you should be able to get in there and just work the old one out. There it is. There's the old seal. Okay, so I got the old seal out. This is the new one and I'm starting to I'm starting to put in here. I use some uh, PTFE based lubricant. Uh, it's designed for seals and gaskets and washers and things like that. So I put some on the outside and now I'm going to uh, very delicately work the seal all the way down until it seats. So I've got the shaft seal, the upper in here, and uh, you got to be careful with this screwdriver and uh, in terms of it poking a hole in the rubber. So you have to be very careful. I've got a wooden block here, and I'm just going all the way around because there's a metal ring at the bottom of this washer, and I'm going all the way around very gently, rotating couple of taps you can see it's it's almost there it's almost flush with the top of this shaft here so just take your time take your time with this and just keep rotating a couple little taps until the uh, until it bottoms out very gently Go all the way around, don't be in a hurry, and, and you'll get the seal down fully to where it's supposed to seat. So here is the, the lower seal. Here's the new one. And you can see that this lip, this ledge right here on this new seal, should be flush with the top of this tube. There she comes. It was a little bit stubborn, but we got her out. Okay. I should say, when I took the old seal out, I took a screwdriver and a wire brush and I cleaned all the crud and uh, the accumulation of gunk that was in this tube. I'm going to add some PTFE grease lubrication to this new um, seal here. It's really important that when you put it in that you don't you don't get the seal cocked. Otherwise, uh, there is a potential that it could leak.
There it goes. That needs to go in just a little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's about right where it should be. Let's start putting this thing together. I'm going to put some of this lubrication on the shaft. that compress these brake shoes so that it slips in like that I'm going to take just a little bit of light grease this is just some high temp grease and just put a little bit on this cam just to kind of re-lubricate this piece right here and now We can reinstall this piece here, like that. Put the C-clip back on. And she's all ready to go. Okay, so we slid the transmission back into the tube and tightened up the, the three half inch bolts. Reconnected the wiring harness, the ground wire, and the water pump. Here's the new upper seal, and here's the new lower seal. It's back together. The frame is free flowing on the pads. You'll see the pads when you take it apart. There's no binding. You want to make sure there's no binding. And that all six pads, there's three in the bottom, three in the top, are smooth like that. Okay, here's the brand new main tub seal. And that's going to fit right down in here. And you'll feel it, you'll feel it click into place. You got to work at it a little bit. It's a new seal. Uh, and there it is. Next up is to install your spring brackets. There are three of them. Quarter inch bolt. Make sure you reattach all. There's actually four springs. And connect your drain hose. Reattach the hose um, that uh, detects the water level. Next up is the drive block. I should mention uh, earlier when I was disassembling the washer, I took this thing out. It was so filthy and corroded. Uh, I've got a bench grinder with a wire brush wheel, and I cleaned it up with that. So. So that goes on now. Make sure that the, the two tabs are lined up for the holes right there. Next up is the washer drum. Make sure it seats on that drive block. Place the retaining ring. And I'm going to snug that down with the channel locks I used to get it off with. pretty tight. Don't forget the clip and the little white plastic piece it goes on there. Then the agitator, top part. Okay, moment of truth. 
Let's put some water in it. Let's go down below and see what's happening. So, as you can see, there's no leaks. Before I changed the seals, I had water dripping from these wheat holes at the bottom of this clutch drum. And there was water running all over the top of this transmission pan down and onto the floor. But the problem is resolved. Okay, let's try the spin cycle. Okay, spin cycle. Spin cycle. So there you have it, changing shaft seals on a washer, probably the most difficult repair to do, but you can do it if you take your time and pack a little patience. If this video was helpful, hit the like button, feel free to leave comments and questions down below, and please subscribe to my channel.